Hi, this is my presentation for EDR 613. I'm using Pre Prezi in conjunction with QuickTime to be able to present my article to you today. The article that I chose is, Is This Really English? Using Young Adult Literature in an Urban Middle School. The reasons that I chose this article are twofold. One, as an ELA middle school teacher, I'm always looking for ways to engage my readers. Additionally, the title really intrigued me. This is an overview of Rebecca J. Joseph's article presented by myself, Lee Potter. The context, her classroom background. The author of the article, Rebecca Joseph, kicks off each new school year with a whole class exploration of what she considers to be a provocative young adult novel. Careful consideration is taken when choosing a novel. She considers her audience's background and what will spark meaningful discussions in the classroom. Prior to Joseph's current teaching placement, she taught at a fairly racially diverse middle school. There, she began the year reading Spinelli's Maniac McGee. Her change to instructing at a school with a populace of 100% African American students changed her novel selection. Students began this school year reading Mary E. Lyons' Letters from a Slave Girl, the story of Harriet Jacobs. This choice reflects the building's school-wide commitment to explore the African American experience. It's a historical fiction novel. A quick caveat. Due to the mature nature of the novel's content, Joseph sent a permission slip home to parents describing the content of the book. This is something I currently don't do in my classroom, but it's providing food for thought as to whether it's something that I should um, employ in the future. By doing this, she had two things happen. She had parent buy-in and felt comfortable that the students were going to be exploring material that their parents were aware of. The second piece was that it allowed an opportunity for parents to continue the conversation about the book at home and thus broaden the reader's experience. Using high interest novels as a springboard in the ELA classroom, the greatest portion of the novel stems from how the novel allowed her to teach specific skills. A high interest novel like Letters from a Slave Girl springboards learning in Joseph's ELA classroom. The first portion that she discussed were speaking and listening skills. She called these conversations. She created an atmosphere where no topic from the novel is off limits in, J in her classroom. This um, function just provides a very comfortable place for students to explore. This also aligns to the Common Core standards about speaking and listening. It creates active reader engagement, it allows for personal exploration, and it's a student-directed exploration. Reading, Joseph's created comprehension questions that were guides for the students as they were reading. As the year progresses, students take on the role of creating the questions, so there's this idea of gradual release and greater ownership in the students' writing. Narrative and expository prompts connected to the literature were incorporated throughout the reading of the novel. This provides prior knowledge for the city prompts that she refers to, which I understand to be required, um, re required writing that was done. She gives a specific example of um, being asked, students being asked to write about a dinner party, but many were unfamiliar with this practice, and she was able to reframe it in the context of the novel and um, to imagine how Harriet would host a dinner party. In addition, she taught grammar, not in a vacuum, but within the context of the individual student writing. Therefore, the grammar instruction was specific to the student and the student's needs. The vocabulary and spelling that they learned in class were based on items pulled from the novel. They were able to see the words being used within the context, which directly connects to our Common Core Standards um, for language 7.4. Here's a quote from Rebecca Josephs. During one of our opening teacher meetings, I did a brief book talk on letters. All the teachers expressed a strong interest in reading the book, as did the office staff. I provided each one with a copy and requested that each teacher plan to include a lesson or two related to the book in their own classes. Everyone agreed to participate. I can just imagine the building that she works in where so many people were willing to um, take on this facet 
of her classroom, and it created a very positive, positive effect, um, both for cross-textual cross -textual and cross-content connections. In the cross-content area, the teachers who um, took on her charge were able to incorporate lessons that dealt with some of the themes and ideas that Harriet, the main character, explored. <clears throat> The first being, in the science classroom, they explored muscu muscular deterioration in connection to Harriet's legs and the atrophy that she experienced. The setting and historical backdrop, backdrop was um, discussed in the social studies class so that students were able to understand um, the challenges that Harriet was experiencing. Cross-text exploration was provided um, within the classroom by Josephs. She did several things. She found poetry um, from several African-American novel, excuse me, poets, um, whose poetry connected to the reading. For instance, Langston Hughes wrote um, Baby, which was a great way for Josephs to have a mini lesson on diction and um, discuss the way that Harriet shared her concern for her brother. Nikki Giovanni shared a um, poem called Legacies, and there was a connection that the students could make, um, almost an allusion to Harriet's um, hiding. Supplemental reading, she also shared Julius Lester's To Be a Slave, and Incidents in the Life of a Slave Girl, which is an autobiography by Harriet Jacobs. This, I can only imagine, created a great backdrop to have a discussion about how historical fiction changes um, changes the portrayal of actual events in history and those of a historical figure. Um, those also align very closely to our common core standards. <clears throat> I would be remiss not to mention her idea of literary matchmaking. Um, as, an ELL, as an ELA teacher, this is a really um, a topic that really speaks to my heart. I love the idea of matchmaking because it's kind of a catchy little saying. Um, and she states that she takes her responsibilities very seriously as a reading matchmaker. And putting books in the hands of students is a huge priority of mine. And trying to find something that a student will grab a hold of is always a challenge. <clears throat> she helps to eliminate that burden by doing reading interest inventories. That's something that I do in my classroom and something that we are um, asked to do for this class as well. She takes into account previous reading experiences that the students have had and creates an extensive lending library within her classroom. When she's connecting students to books, if she feels like the, necess the content may be a little too mature, she does get parent buy-in and sends permission slips. How do I apply this in my classroom? I've mentioned a few things. Food for thought for myself is that idea of permission slips for books. Um, one of the novels that students had the option of reading in my classroom this year was L.A. Wiesel's Night, which had some very um, vivid pictures of the Holocaust and the retelling of a Holocaust survivor's accounts. Something that I prefaced with the kids, the um, nature of it, but in retrospect, I think that it would have been good to have parents be involved in that as well. I consistently do book talks in my classroom. I use trailers for books, um, and I talk consistently about things that I'm reading. Novels with connected readings, I, I often do that where I find poems or supplementary texts that will show a different author's purpose and perspective when sharing um, an idea. Matchmaking student chosen books and book clubs, this is something that I work pretty hard doing. As a school district, we work very hard for students to have choice. One of the things that we have done with my eighth graders is we created book clubs and the creation of those book clubs are based on students interests. So students were asked to take a look at several different books that we had multiple copies of in our language arts closets. Since students are each of our students has a one to has a one to one device. Each has a Chromebook. I asked each student to take ten to fifteen minutes to take a look at these different novels and make a decision about what would be of the highest interest to them. Additionally, they needed to take into account their lexile level and determine if the book would be a good fit. 
When they had completed that, they then went to this survey. And in the survey, they were asked to do some specific things. Some of them were just administrative to be able to sort the information for myself um, as far as their name, their Lexile range. But then I asked them to give me their first choice as far as books to read. In this role, I am asking students to make a decision about what they think is going to be most interesting. I asked them to confirm the Lexile level was appropriate for them and then to tell me a little bit about what piqued their interest about the novel. Then their final option, they did that for a second novel as well, is they were asked to give me a person they'd love to work with, with, with in class and someone who they'd prefer not to. This was kept completely confidential and students were not able to see any of this information. And from there, I worked to create a grouping system where students were first, whenever possible, put in their first choice book. And then um, I was able to honor all of the requests of people that they didn't want to work with. They don't always have this option, but in this particular situation, I was able to honor that. Um, and we work consistently throughout the school year on working with people um, that may not be our favorite choice. So this is what the book groups looked like. And students got together in their group and determined, based on the amount of time that we were using in class, how many pages they needed to read per day. And that aligned with the Common Core standards of being prepared when they came to the book club discussion. Along those lines, I asked students for their input. How should we, um, how should we handle their classmates that don't come prepared to class. One of the requirements was that each student had 10 sticky notes with um, different types of connections to the reading that they had made. These were to be used to help foster the conversation within the group. They were asked to make text-to-self connections, text-to-text, text-to-world, um, identify any new words that they encountered. So unlike the way Joseph's had presented vocabulary, I was asking students to identify new words on their own within the text. Knowing that preparation for the meeting was so important, as a whole class, we talked about different possibilities as far as um, how we should handle students that weren't prepared. As a group, they made the determination as to what options there were. And then I created a quick survey, and in that survey, They shared what they thought, and then the majority won as far as how they were going to handle classmates that weren't prepared. I didn't have a big, um, I didn't mind whichever way they felt like it, it needed to be handled, I wanted them to handle it. Um, and that created a student-centered approach to it. So between my fifth and sixth hour classes of eighth graders, they both wanted to handle it in different ways, and that was 100% okay. Again, it was student-centered. Upon the completion of the novel, having been read, they had a final book club. They had a final book club discussion that they needed to complete. This final book club discussion was something um, where they went to our Weebly site, which is a common practice that they have, and then they found the novel that they were discussing. They clicked on the link. And then they found a Google document that they made a copy of. This Google document was actually student created. And they simply put their name at the top. And then the conversation, there was a secretary within the group who took notes about what was happening. So the discussions that Joseph was having as a whole group were happening at a smaller level. And I monitored um, by moving around the classroom and asking for further elaboration when groups didn't seem to be um, really meshing. <clears throat> Some unanswered questions that I had had to do with following up on student growth and grammar. I think that it was fabulous, this idea of not teaching in a vacuum and having it very applicable to what the student needed to know and learn. I just wasn't sure how she followed up with that piece. How, how were you confident that students had mastered the idea of subject and verb agreement? <clears throat> for instance. Additionally, feeling left out for the accommodations for English as a second learner students and um, different le reading levels. All in all, I found her article to be very interesting.